I'm free. Father, Holy Spirit, let loose on me. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, where my first ever class on animating with After Effects is now available. The first 1,000 people to click the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare premium membership, where you can access thousands of classes in fields like visual art, music, and productivity. That's skl.sh slash volksgeist 08211. In the months following Donda's release, as I became more and more familiar with the album, there are two things that really started to solidify as central to what it's all about. Where I previously saw messy rambling and unsatisfying half-finished concepts, I was starting to feel like there was something more underneath the surface. A sense of meaning and purpose that took time to uncover, and it was moving me more than any Kanye album ever had before. The sense of being too long, too messy, and the poor quality control that comes from a nearly two-hour album with 27 tracks, that was going away as I started to connect more deeply with the songs and find meaning in the chaos. Because Donda isn't an album about Donda, the person. It's an album about what Donda did. It tells the story of the values she instilled in Kanye, the way she taught him to love and believe in himself and to overcome everything to become who he is. It's not a biography of the woman herself, though we know she was an amazingly strong and intelligent person. She participated in a three-day sit-in in Oklahoma at the age of nine, helping end segregation in Oklahoma City. She went on to teach at Chicago State University for more than 30 years and served as the head of their communications department for more than 25. In the words of of Rhymefest, Kanye's co-writer on Jesus Walks and New Slaves, she was everyone's mom. A spirit never dies. A spirit lasts forever. And we've already known for years how important Kanye's mom has always been in his life and his music. Two of the most emotional songs he's ever put to record, Hey Mama and Coldest Winter, tell the story of his love and appreciation for his mother, and subsequently the pain he felt when he lost her. But when Donda died just a few years later following complications from a cosmetic surgery, Kanye immediately blamed himself. And after all, he had paid for the operations. In his words, if I had never moved to LA, she'd be alive. And you can see this pain start to change him. I mean, we all know the story. Kanye's villain arc basically began the day his mother died, and we've been waiting for it to end ever since. Look at this video of him performing Hey Mama in 2013. He physically can't finish the song. Yeah, his face is hidden by the mask, but look, I can tell you right now, this is the pain of a broken man. And this is what it looks like to be haunted by your past and overcome with guilt and grief. And Kanye went through that for years. I think it's fair to say Kanye never completely recovered from his mother's death. I think he was so angry at himself, so regretful and bitter, that much of his music following Donda's passing is, by and large, fueled by self-hatred. 808s and Heartbreak, Dark Twisted Fantasy, Yeezus, even Pablo, he hadn't just lost his mom, he had lost a part of himself, and I don't think the shift in the sound of his music was a coincidence. I think we can all agree that in many ways, Kanye lost his spark, he lost his happiness. In Dark Twisted Fantasy, Yeezus, and Pablo, they're amazing albums, masterpieces, cinematic magnum opuses, back to back, but at the same time, these albums are fractured and dark. In many ways, they're broken, they're deeply disconnected from what makes people happy, love, family, friendship. And Kanye was cut off from humanity. In 2015, Kanye released only one with Paul McCartney, the first sign of a new era. In his words, he doesn't remember recording it in the studio and ultimately came to the conclusion that his mother's spirit was speaking through him when he recorded the track. I mean, it's up to the listeners if we want to believe in a more supernatural interpretation of the song, but at the very least, I think we can all agree it's a beautiful, peaceful track that conveys more love and peace than anything Kanye had made in many years before that. And ever since then, Kanye's been on a different road. From his exploration of mental health, family, fatherhood, and marriage on Ye, to the almost spiritual look at self-acceptance and inner peace on Kids See Ghosts, to the straight religion religious worship of Jesus as king, I mean, it doesn't get more turning a new leaf than that. And I remember the entire time, the whole music community was clowning on Kanye for this new chapter. People were calling him washed up or stupid or saying he was losing his touch, but ultimately I think we were missing the point all along. Kanye was learning how to love himself again. He was rediscovering his sense of purpose and his love of life that had been missing from his music for many years. As I was becoming more and more familiar with Donda, the album's true power began to reveal itself. I started to realize what Donda really stood for, a deeply introspective look into Kanye's mind as he reached the final hurdle of self-acceptance and forgiveness. And I've come to see it as Kanye's most true and beautiful album yet. Ultimately, the use of religious themes throughout Donda almost feels like a narrative device to represent Kanye's mental process of self-forgiveness and self-acceptance. What I mean by this is he's doing important psychological work to rid himself of his inner demons. He's trying to get over his pain and loss, and he's leaning on the safety and power of religion to give him the strength to do so. I mean, it's hardly a new concept. We've been looking to God for strength for thousands of years. The 16th century poem, Dark Night of the Soul by St. John of the Cross, is one of my very favorites, and it reminds me deeply of Donda especially with the references to light and darkness and night and day as spiritual states of being. It goes like this. In the happy night in secret, when none saw me, nor I beheld aught, 
without light or guide, save that which burned in my heart. This light guided me more surely than the light of noonday, to the place where he, well I know who, was awaiting me, a place where none appeared. I remained lost in oblivion, my face I reclined on the beloved. All ceased, and I abandoned myself, leaving my cares forgotten among the lilies. In the words of the writer Peter Holleran, in essence, the famed Dark Knight is considered by some to be a transitional phase between a long novitiate of self-effort to a more direct path of self-transcendence, from a time of reliance on the ego to one of reliance on and transformation by the divine from belief in a personal self to knowledge of its unreality, from identification with the ego to identification with the higher self, and the very self of conscious being that you are, and from the feeling of the soul being somehow inside the body to that of the body also being inside of the greater soul. The Dark Knight brings a thorough purgation where the personal will passes through existential hopelessness and increasingly becomes sacrificed to the divine will. It produces a complete metamorphosis wherein one's conception of self and world are literally turned inside out. Again from Peter Holleran, the revelations of the dark night of the soul are essentially what masters mean when they say that self-knowledge precedes God-knowledge. Teresa of Avila held that the first mansion of spirituality was true self-knowledge. We see what we are really made of in all of our human misery, emptiness, and insufficiency in order to be prepared to then see the awesome grandeur and mercy of God, who is more the life of the soul than the soul is the life of the body. We are, in essence, purified of the conceit of the Gnostics, which Irenaeus said long ago was that they seek to become divine before they have become human. So this sort of teaching has been around for a long time, and I think it perfectly describes the process that Kanye and his collaborators go through on Donda. What I'm trying to say is that Donda's beauty turns out to be potent and powerful only in that it exists as a product of pain and suffering. Donda is a tale written from the perspective of a spiritual refugee. It exists as the search for safety and security from the suffering inherent to human life and the inherent human inability to deal with it. But in doing so, it must recognize that suffering without pause. And in this way, I've come to feel like Donda is one of the most beautiful and true albums ever made. The songs like No Child Left Behind, Jonah, Pure Souls, 24, Heaven and Hell, we see Kanye tackling his inner demons in a meaningful way. And there are kind of two ways to look at it, depending on your own beliefs. You can buy into the idea that religion has led Kanye to personal revelations, that his faith and relationship with God gave him a new perspective on the story of his own life, a more peaceful and wholesome outlook. Or you can look at it from a more materialistic perspective, that Kanye wanted to find an answer to his questions regardless and is using religion as a vehicle, a psychological crutch even, to make sense of his inner struggle. And look, that's a much bigger discussion that I can get into here, but I might go so far as to say that the two things aren't mutually exclusive. In my mind, it might even be possible for him to be doing both at the same time. And of course, Donda is only made more beautiful by the presence of Kanye's long list of talented collaborators and their uniquely powerful contributions to the narrative of self-transcendence and introspection. Because while Kanye alone is one thing, bringing others together has always been one of his greatest strengths. You only have to listen to Donda once to realize that the record has an all-star cast and crew, and maybe I'm saying this as someone who's super Gen Z, but it's 100% my favorite guest list of any Kanye album ever. I mean, Cardi, 5 Yo Foreign, Baby and Dirk, The Weeknd, Vori, Baby Keem, Travis, Yachty, Thugger, Don Tolliver, Kid Cudi, Roddy Rich, even Pop Smoke, kind of. And the older generation has a lot of representation too. Conway the Machine, West Side Gun, Jay Electronica, Jay-Z, Andre 3000. I mean, I know I'm leaving some people out, but damn, it's a very long list of guests. And in my mind, it may be the best album for feature I've ever heard, let alone from Kanye, but in all of music. There is something so consistently thoughtful and genuine about the writing from each and every single guest on Donda. In many cases, I've never heard them perform this well ever before in their careers. All of them pulled out so much energy, so much talent and focus that my mind was blown hearing these tracks for the first time. And even now, months later, the way these different features stand together as a cohesive body of work, despite coming from artists in every single corner of hip-hop, it's mind-blowing. To me, the central concept that ties these features together is simple. Each and every one of these artists, every single one of these people, just like Kanye, has a demon that they need to confront and overcome. And it's very hard for me to pick my favorite feature verse because they're all so powerful, but if I had to pick one in particular that speaks to me, it would be Baby's verse on Hurricane. I've always loved Lil Baby's writing. I think he's one of the best rappers out there, but there's just something so true and powerful about his verse on Donda. It goes the extra mile to address his inner thoughts and feelings in an open, honest way. He talks about feeling alone in his life, as if at the same time fame has changed his situation for the better, it's also been something of a curse with an isolating effect. Ultimately, what hits the hardest is the line about starting over. Early morning brainstorming, normally I can't sleep in. Sometimes I just want to restart, but it all depends. The sense of loneliness is palpable. You can feel how much this verse means to him as he grapples with the idea that success doesn't fix suffering. In fact, the higher you rise, it seems unavoidable that yet more challenges will rise to meet you. It's the same for Fivio's inspiring story of coming from nothing on Off the Grid as he explores what it means to keep yourself safe in the wake of unprecedented success. And Jonah is yet another deeply moving song that finds Vori exploring the pain of isolation as he questions why he's had to go through his trial 
trials and fight his demons all by himself. By and large, the feature verses on Donda are a testament to the reality of the human condition. These feature verses deny the larger than life social status of musical artists in our culture today. There is no self aggrandizement. There is no flexing. There is nothing fake or untrue in their words. They're united in humility and honesty. In the words of Andre 3000 on Life of the Party, Hey Miss Donda, you run into my mama, please tell her I said say something. I'm starting to believe ain't no such thing as heaven's trumpets. No, after, over, this is it, done. If there's a heaven, you would think it'd let you speak to your son. And later, Miss Donda, you see my mama, tell her I'm lost. And most importantly of all, on God Breathed by Vori. Devil's talking to me, angel's talking to me, but angels start to tell me it's okay to not feel okay. I know that you'd be proud if you were here today, but it's okay because I'm okay. It's in these moments that Donda's true meaning is revealed. In the words of 19th century Indian poet Ghalib, when your grief transcends all bounds, it becomes its own cure. Everyone struggles. Everyone suffers. It's a part of the human condition, an unavoidable state that everybody must encounter at some point in their life. There is no one on this planet who has never suffered, but so much of the time we try to avoid suffering by any means necessary. But the truth is, there is no peace until we accept our suffering for what it is, a natural and inseparable part of who we are. Kanye spent years running from the self-imposed guilt from his mother's death. In many ways, it ruined him. He was the source of his own torment, and he spent a long time stuck in a paradox of self-imposed exile. And Donda is, for all intents and purposes, Kanye closing the book on this suffering. Now, he's always going to feel the pain of his mother's death, and he's probably always going to feel guilty. But like I said earlier, Donda isn't an album about Donda the person. It's an album about what Donda did for the world. Again, in the words of Rhymefest, Donda was everyone's mom. A spirit never dies, a spirit lasts forever. By bringing together so many amazing artists to face their own suffering, their own demons, and their own human nature head on, by challenging them to reach a new level of honesty with their words instead of hiding behind the illusion of being larger than life, by addressing life for what it is, pain and suffering included, Donda is far and away one of the most beautiful albums I've ever heard. In the 33rd verse of the 8th chapter of the book of Mark in the Bible, Jesus says to his disciples, Get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. To me, that is the message of Donda. Healing must be achieved by looking outside of oneself, as our human nature is insufficient to properly love and care for ourselves. As Kanye sings on Pure Souls, It ain't how it used to be. This is a new me, so get used to me. Devil, get behind me. I'm loose, I'm free. Father, Holy Spirit, let loose on me. If you want to use 2022 to pursue something creative and learn how to better express your thoughts and feelings through media, I cannot recommend Skillshare enough. It's impossible to overstate how useful Skillshare can be. I use Skillshare all the time to help me brush up on my video editing and animation skills and learn new techniques, and I honestly can't recommend them enough. Skillshare offers meaningful membership. There are many different avenues and techniques to explore for each subject, real projects to create, and a great community of people on the site. Skillshare genuinely empowers people to pursue real creative growth and better themselves. Their lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to techniques you never could have imagined before. And they have tons of interesting topics covered by industry professionals from music production, audio engineering, motion graphics, design, video editing and photography, to business, and much more. Plus, Skillshare has no ads and they're always launching new classes, including my own, where I teach my most basic, intermediate, and advanced techniques for making amazing 2D animations in After Effects. From mixing your own music to making crazy trap beats to animating in After Effects, Skillshare has something for everybody. Last but not least, a premium annual membership with Skillshare is extremely affordable at less than $10 a month. So if you want to join Skillshare and upgrade your skills, the first 1,000 people to click the link below will get a one-month free trial to Skillshare, where you can check out my class on making amazing 2D animations in After Effects, just like the ones I use in my videos, for free. Again, that's skl.sh slash volksgeist08211.